Hello everybody and welcome back to another Ghost Bear Gaming video. Today we are playing Skyrim. Um, I've uh, haven't played Skyrim in a while and uh, I was watching a couple of things. Um, more than anything I was watching a, a podcast of somebody that I uh, was interviewing one of the devs for Bethesda and they were talking about all kinds of different things and the podcaster really really likes Skyrim uh, it's one of his favorite games ever and he was talking about it so much so I was like you know what I haven't played Skyrim in forever so maybe I'll give it a shot and play some and record some I've never actually finished the storyline of Skyrim I've played so many hours of Skyrim and gotten into it but I always change characters or want to do a different build or go in a different direction or go to a different area that I've never actually gone through the entire storyline of Skyrim start to finish and actually finished the whole story so um, maybe we can try that out and I'll see if I can get through it in a in a walkthrough so I hope you guys all enjoy this and um, I've got a pre-made character that I'll uh, go to uh, at the start of this so I'm just gonna cut to um, my character um, right as you're caught as the prisoner I'm gonna skip the, the long boring uh, credits and the wagon ride at the beginning of the game if any of you guys haven't played this and you want to see the the wagon ride maybe leave a comment and I'll um, try to just throw it in the video to show you guys the very very start of the game but I'm just skipping just the initial opening credits and I'll show you the character creation uh, scene or I won't show you all of character creation but I'll just show you my starting character and the very start of the game so uh, all right well I will see you all in one sec when I switch over to that and uh, we'll get started Alright, so I've made this <clears throat> character here, uh, put together this little preset character. Um, I don't mind these uh, facial features on this guy. I'm going to go with an Imperial for this uh, run. Um, my character playstyle that I'm going to try and do, I really want to try and be a like holy warrior paladin type person in Skyrim um, you don't really get that feel whenever I play Skyrim there's always the chance to steal things and to go down the thieves path and it's really easy and it's a really good way to make money and all that kind of stuff and you don't really have to be a like a noble character in this game if you don't want to you can just go around and do whatever the heck you want to do but I really do want to try and play like a like a holy warrior type paladin character in this game so that's why i'm going with imperial because they get um heavy armor um they get restoration magic um as one of their buffs um i believe they get one-handed weapon and shield as well but i can't remember exactly but once i get started all it's been a while since i played skyrim so I've uh, gone through all the presets, made this character how I want him, so now I'm just going to name him, and then we'll get started. So I think I will call him Rothgar. I don't know why I like that name, but I do. So we will enter, and we'll start the story. You're a long way from the Imperial City. Let's what turn are you it up doing a little in bit. Skyrim? Captain, what should we do? He's not on the list. Forget the list. He goes to the by your orders, I just skipped I'm the sorry. wagon scene sure like, you of you coming into this part. But. The captain, oh, I get to go walk to the block. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you have ever played Skyrim before or not, but in Skyrim... I'll just wait till he talks and then... Is going to put you down and restore the peace. 
So the story, basic story in Skyrim is that the Stormcloaks are the Nords. These guys and that guy there, Ulfric Stormcloak, he um, supposedly killed the king and um, has started a rebellion against the Imperials, who are those other guys, um, against the Empire. And um, you kind of are somebody who just got picked up in the middle of a... Um, you just happened to be there. These guys got captured by the Imperials and you got taken along with them. So now this guy's going to get his head cut off. And then it's your turn. See, some people aren't happy with the Imperials. As fearless of death as he was in life. Next, a renegade from Cyrodiil. That's me, because I'm technically an Imperial, like them, but because I was with them, they're calling me a renegade. I said, next prisoner. And there's just like a, a roar. That got, I'll turn it up a little bit more. And what is that? Sentry, what do you see? This is a bomb. All right, so now we got a figure out how to move and we follow this guy over here what is that thing? Can the legends be true legends don't burn down villages we need to move now up through the tower let's go so yeah you go up the tower what I died. So now you gotta go over here and jump down into here. And you basically just gotta keep running for your life for a little bit. Jumped out of that tower Keep into here. If you want to stay that way. This Brother, is. Take care of the boy. I have to find General Tolias and join the defense. God's guide you, Hadvar. So you stick with Hadvar and you go to the wall. More dead people? Oh, did I get knocked down? How did I get knocked down? <clears throat> okay. okay, so now there's Rayloff and there's Hadvar. And depending on who you want to side with in this part, you can either follow Rayloff or you can go with Hadvar. So if you go in here, you follow Rayloff, and if you go over here, you follow Hadvar. So I like following ha uh, Rayloff into into the keep. So this. We're the only ones who made it. That thing was a dragon, no doubt. Just like the children's stories and the legends. In this, dragons have been the end times. dragons have been gone for a the long time. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. There you go. So cut your hands free. 
So now you can take Gunther's gear because he doesn't need it. And you equipped an axe and some fur boots and a Stormcloak Curious. In this game, you can pick up all kinds of stuff, but they don't really do anything. So I hide back here. So when they come in, they fight, start fighting him first. He can't die. So no matter what you do, I was going to show you this guys too. Um, so you start with healing, so I can put that in my left hand, which is always nice to do. Um, and then restoration, 25. So if you go to skills, this is what I was talking about. Every, there's a whole bunch of skills in this game, um, and every race comes with some that start at 20, one that starts at 25, and then the rest are at 15. And so Imperials, the reason why I like them is they start with restoration, which is healing spells, um, and turn undead stuff. So that's why my paladin type build I'm going for. Uh, they start that at 25. They get destruction magic at 20. Um, they get enchanting at 20, which is good because it helps you with your enchanting. Um, they get heavy armor, so they're better at heavy armor off the start. They're better at block and they're better at one hand. So it's like all the skills that I kind of want with, um, uh, whatchamacallit, a paladin type build is this, so. Stamina is low, so this is your stamina bar. When you swing, if you do a normal swing, it uh, doesn't take any stamina. But if you hold the button, you do a power swing. And that takes up stamina. So now you can take all this stuff if you want, but I just want the sword. I'll take a dagger because they're fairly cheap. And then what I usually look for is value to weight ratio. So um, like bracers are better than boots because bracers only weigh one, but they're still worth the same amount. Helmets are worth two weight, but they're double the value. They're more than double the value. So a helmet is worthwhile picking up, and bracers are worthwhile picking up. But the like, if one to fifteen is kind of your rough value, six times fifteen is what uh, thirty, sixty, ninety. So technically, the studded leather armor is actually worthwhile grabbing too. It's a better weight to value ratio. Um, so that's what I look for when I'm trying to decide what I want to carry. Now this girl has heavy armor so I want to get all of it so I can wear it. She's got an imperial sword and a dagger. The daggers probably actually aren't worth it now that I think about it. Um, so let's go items, weapons. I want to use a sword and I might as well use a second sword right now because I don't have a shield. So I'll use two weapons and then I will equip the the heavy imperial armor, the imperial boots, the bracers, 
and the officer's helmet. So there's my full. Now the Stormcloak Curious, they're not worth it at all. They're only worth 25 and they weigh 8, so I'm going to drop that. No, I want to drop it, not equip it. Oh, I hit E. Duh. Okay, I want to drop that because it's not worth it. The Rough Spun Tunic is not worth the weight, for sure. Fur boots are terrible, and so are the foot wraps. So I want to drop all that kind of stuff. Because you can only carry so much. Um, you have 300 carrying capacity. Um, so you want to make sure you're not carrying too much junk. So. Here we are. Found the key. Let's see if it opens that door. Oh, yeah. And then the other thing you can do is hotkey stuff. So I want to go this and I want to how do you have, oh favorite is F yeah while in game press Q to open the favorites menu which allows you to quickly use or equipped items you have marked as favorites so I have now favorited healing and then you can also favorite you also have flames but I don't want to use that too much um, now the other thing that Imperial luck, anywhere golds. So this is something you always have. Anywhere gold coins might be found, Imperials always seem to find a few more. So that's something that Imperials get. And then this voice of the Emperor is also kind of cool. It, um, you can use this once a day, um, and for 60 seconds you calm nearby people. Um, so it's very handy to have. So now if I go back to items and weapons, I want a favorite the sword. And now if I go to Q, now I can do something where I go, I put this at 1, and healing at 2, and voice of the emperor, I'll put it like 8 or 7. Yeah. So now if I push 2, I can bring out my healing. And if I push 1, my sword comes back. So it's quick. Alright. Now I'm going to grab a couple of cabbages. Ooh, I didn't want to do that. That's what I look like now, by the way. Now that I'm in my imperial armor. So I look kind of cool. So I grabbed those cabbages. And now we just move along here in the keep. This is like the prequel thing. Press M2 to... Oh, I can't... Oh, that's only if you... The M2 to block is only if you're only using one weapon. As you use skills in this game, let's get some healing. There we go. Kill him. I want to use my healing to heal me. The way this game works for um, skills is the more you use something, the more your skill will improve in it. I'm gonna search for potions. Okay, so let's search the Imperial Soldier. Again, the... See, the swords, the swords actually aren't worth nothing to carry. So I'll take this. Uh, helmet's not bad. The boots kind of suck, but the bracers are worth it. And yeah, weapons aren't really worth it. Actually, no. The only thing that daggers are worthwhile getting is for chanting later. So what I'll actually do? Let me drop a couple of these swords. I don't want. Well, no, I'll keep the two. I don't want the axe. That's for sure. I, I, oh, 
me do this. There we go. Hit the wrong buttons all the time. Um, so the Imperial Armor actually isn't worth that much, it, and it's way heavier, so it's not worth it to grab that. Same with the boots aren't worth it, the bracers. None of those are worthwhile grabbing. I will grab the daggers, though. <clears throat> so, now you can always look around for stuff. Things that are worthwhile. Baskets aren't worth nothing to keep, but things like this that are hanging, elves ears, garlic, Dried frost mirror, all this stuff is worth uh, is enchanting materials, so they're worthwhile grabbing. Um, bread can sometimes. Here's a magic potion. Salt pile is always great to grab. And what else? Minor healing potion. Wine's not too bad. It's worth money. You can sell it later. Same with the alta wine. They don't weigh very much, and they're worth some money, so you can sell them after. Line. So now they want me to search this barrel for potions. So there's healing potions, magicka potions, and stamina potions. So another thing you can do is, now that you've got potions, you can um, uh, favorite them as well. And then when you go to your queue, you can set those. Like I can set a healing potion as six and a stamina potion as like five, and if I hit those buttons, I'll drink those potions. Um, so it's worthwhile to do. And then sacks, you can search. Ooh, tomatoes, those are, tomatoes are so important. They're the only things, wow, I got so lucky. Cabbages, I'll tell you why I got so lucky once we get out of here, but um, tomatoes are the only vegetable rock warbler eggs in this basket those are always there so you'll always find them same with this salt pile and that mag uh, magic potion all these ingredients are used in alchemy Now I leveled up because I increased my skill enough that I was able to level up. Okay. So the torturer has nothing really of value on him. Ooh, a steel dagger is worth more, so I'll grab that. Torturer's assistant, an iron mace. Maces are decent for one-handed fighting. I think I'll grab it just in case to show you guys. Iron dagger. Lockpicks. Anything else down here? There's some books that you can get. There's another mace there. Ooh, a shield. Okay, I'll grab a shield. So now you can hit this if you want to to level up. Whenever you level up, you get to choose. Uh, when you level up, you can choose to increase your health, your magicka, or your stamina. And then you also can select a perk. So uh, my character is going to be mostly a fighter, so I'm going to up my health. Um, and then you can go into any of your abilities, and they all have perks that you can unlock. So. Um, one-handed, I can unlock a perk first that gives me plus 20% more damage to one-handed weapons. Um, and then, or I can go to like block, gives me shield wall where my blocking is 20% more effective. Or heavy armor, uh, gives you juggernaut where your armor is increased, armor rating of heavy armor is increased by 20%. So, and you can always unlock other things like smithing. There's things like steel smithing allows you to make steel armor, uh, restoration, um, cast novice level restoration spells for half the magicka, which I think I will take because that's worth. Um, 
That'll be my second one. I think I'll start with the one-handed to get I get armsman level one. So now I can get armsman level two, which gives me another 20%. So by the time you finish this, you'll get 100% increased one-handed damage. This one requires level 20, and then the next one will require even more. And then as you unlock one of these, you can get to the next level. So fighting stance, power attacks with 100 weapons cost 25% less stamina. So whenever you hold the button and do a swing, it takes 25% less stamina to do that. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, so it, uh, but And then that requires level 25 as well. There's this one, hack and slash. Attacks with war axes cause extra bleeding damage, which sounds good, but it's really not that great. Requires level 30. Um, bone breaker. Attacks with maces ignore 25% armor. That's actually decent. Um, and then bladesmen. Uh, attacks with swords have a 10% chance of doing critical damage. That sounds good too, but it's not as good. I can't remember. There's something about the way they calculate critical damage. It's not that fantastic either. So these aren't, Bone Breaker's really the only one that's kind of worthwhile getting if you're using maces. These ones aren't that great. Um, and then Critical Charge, you can do a one-handed power attack while sprinting that deals double critical damage. That one's not great. Standing power attacks do 25% bonus damage chance to decapitate your enemies. So that one's actually not bad. And then the final one, Paralyzing Strike, a backwards power attack has a 25% chance to paralyze the target. So that one's interesting too. And then this far side is dual wielding. So you can use two weapons um, to attack faster and deal more damage. So that's everything in the uh, one-handed tree. Mostly what I get in one-handed is just armsmen. I don't really care much about these other ones for perks. <clears throat> so, but getting the extra damage early is quite handy. So now the other thing I want to do is go apparel. I want to favorite the shield. And now if I go back to my favorites, I want to actually put the shield as number two and healing as number three. So now if I hit number two, it'll bring up my shield so I can block. But if I'm hurt, I can quickly switch to healing for number three. So in the backpack, there's also some locksmith lockpicks and another potion. I'll take the dagger, <clears throat> book of the dragonborn. So these are all there's all kinds of books that you can pick up, and if you're really into the lore, you can read the books, and they give you all kinds of information that's kind of cool. So now, lockpicking. So how lockpicking works is you kind of move the lockpick around, and when you push W, it'll try and move. And if it doesn't move at all, then it'll wiggle. But you kind of have to put... Oh, there's nothing in this one. Oh yeah, I forgot. I do these just to get my lock picking skill up. So there's somebody in that cage. So um, see how it, if I push this, it doesn't really move. Um, so you got to kind of try and find it, the spots where it starts to move, and then it should open for you. There's some gold, a magicka potion, a tome of sparks, and I'll search the mage for gold potions. And then these are worthwhile if you're going to be a magic caster. And they're also good because they're enchanted stuff, so they sell for a lot if you don't want to be a magic caster. <clears throat> but if you want to be a mage in this, getting those two... <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Getting these two uh, things right off the bat is really handy because... <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. They, they don't give you anything for armor but they, this one increases your Magicka by 30, and this one regenerates your Magicka faster. So having those when you're trying to cast magic spells all the time is really handy. So I just also like to keep trying to open these locks so I can improve my lock picking skill. Every time you use a skill, like I said, it increases your, uh, your level. So as your skills, see my heavy armor, armor skills, 
get increased when you take damage when you're wearing that type of armor. So if you're wearing heavy armor and you take damage, you'll increase your heavy armor skill. Blocking increases every time you block. Weapons, obviously, whenever you use your weapon, you increase those skills. Um, sneak is whenever you hold control or hit control and you sneak around. If there are people visible to see you, that'll increase your sneaking skill. Lock picking, pretty self-explanatory. It um, uh, gets increased as you pick locks. Pickpocketing is as you uh, try to pickpocket people, you'll start to get better at it. But um, if you get caught, you can get thrown in jail. Speech is for interacting with merchants and talking to people. You get better prices from merchants and you're able to persuade people to do stuff for you. And again, that gets increased every time you use it. Alchemy, you increase every time you try to make something with an alchemy table. Um, and then all the magic types increase based on using those types of spells. And then enchanting and smithing get increased when you use them to either enchant something or build something, obviously. So that's kind of a rundown on Skyrim skills. This is a, I'm hoping this is for people who have never ever played this game before because it's an older game. See, I broke, that's the other thing, lock picks. If you're trying to pick something and you don't quite get it right and you try and force it, um, you can break your pick. You kind of have to just, there, my lock picking's going up. Is there, some, there is something in one of these. Oh, yeah, this one. There's a coin purse, and the skeleton has some bone meal and a gold on him. Normally you can blow through this a lot faster, but skeletons always have bone meal. Stormcloak just has ragged robes. There's nothing on the shelves. I always like to look and try and find as much stuff as I can because it's worthwhile to pick up some of these things. Because again, once I get to the part where you're out in the world, I don't want to rob anybody i don't want to steal anything because i'm a paladin and i'm an honorable person and i just want to try and do good for the world so i'm gonna pull out my shield Oh, somebody shot me. Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna quickly heal. Let them fight them a little bit. Kind of have to be careful too in these melees. Um, if you accidentally hit one of the storm cloaks, uh, they might turn on you. Like if you hit them too much, they'll try to turn on you. You only have so much magicka. There, I got in the killing blow on that one, so you get to sometimes get. Okay, so I'll grab some arrows. Longbows? No, they're not really worth it for weight to gold value. Uh, let's see, 
this leather armor isn't the greatest because it's 6 to 75 and it should be 90 if it's the same as these. So the helmet and the bracers are still worthwhile, but the rest of them aren't. So arrows, anything worthwhile. I don't really want a bow because I don't want to use bows. Uh, so helmet, bracers. Arrows, uh, helmet, bracers. Okay. Another thing you can do if you don't want to fight this and you really want to get by, when you come out that door, you can just jump across here real quick, run over here, and hit this lever, and those guys won't attack you fast enough for you to just be able to use this and keep going. I'll maybe do a speed run time next time. A speed run through this initial part one time. There's a cave in. Now you can't go back. <clears throat> so that's the way you want to go, but if you come this way real quick, there's something over this way. There's a skeleton you can grab. There's another coin purse. There's another healing potion. There's more gold on the skeleton. And is there sometimes a dagger? No, I don't think so. Can't remember if there's anything this way either. No, nope. okay. So that's just one way you can go to get a few extra little coins. It's not super important, but it can sometimes help if you're new to the game and you don't really know where you're going and what you're doing. Coin purse. Oh yeah, now there's spiders. I forgot about the spiders. Come on, Rayloff. Let's go. Come on. I want your help with the spiders. He can't die in this, so in this part especially, when you're just learning how to play the game... Oh, shoot, they spat at me. You want to usually let him go first, so that he can kind of tank everything. Actually, I'm pretty sure I'm playing this on the highest difficulty, so let me just see. Settings, gameplay, difficulty, yeah, I'm on legendary, so um, I've thought about taking that down a bit, because <coughs> the one thing about this game, which I'll explain in a sec, I'm just going to get all this stuff, Frostbite Venom, um, Ooh, a silver ring. Frostbite Venom is a poison that you can use. Um, so you can coat your weapon in it. And it will... Uh, deal damage to people. Um, and then inside these egg sacs, there are spider eggs, which are components in alchemy. Um, and then also in these desecrated corpses, you can find stuff. So there's a few egg sacks with spider's eggs. Um, there's, and then there's these web sacks, which are skeever tails, which are again also used for um, alchemy. So getting all these things are these are empty so then there's a few more over here there's another web sack here with another skeever tail skeever tails are used for uh, a really good poison actually that's good to use on people or you can just sell them so 
spider egg, <clears throat> spider egg, and spider egg. Okay, so that should be everything out of here. I got that spider. Sometimes kicking stuff, you accidentally get hurt. Yeah, yeah, Rayloff. Don't fuss about it. I heal myself a little. <coughs> Grab the coin purse that's in here and some of the wine. And then there's also a bottle of Blackbriar Mead. There's an iron helmet. In that cart. So those are worth money. So you can either control, which puts you in sneak mode, and then as long as you're sneaking. Uh, if that stays flat, nobody can see you. But as it starts to open, oh, see, you're, I was detected. So if I hide there, now I'm not. I'm hidden again. So the bear is going to go back to sleep. Oh, oh, I got spotted. So we wait for the bear to go back to sleep, and then you sneak. Uh, I was detected. So that's kind of how you sneak. If you want to try and sneak past. Or you can fight the bear. Normally bears are very tough in this game. But this is a... Uh, <clears throat> this is a much dumbed down bear. So you can fight the bear. Be able to use your healing magic to get your healing skill up. And you get bear claws and a bear pelt if you kill it. So that's why I like to kill it. And that is all you have to do to get out of this part. And then you start the rest of what is Skyrim, as I'll show you once we get out of here. So you kill that bear, and you run this way. That looks like the way out. Do it, mate. And now, we get to go up to Skyrim. So I'm level two. So survival mode. Uh, no, I don't want to enable survival mode. Survival mode adds the need to eat, sleep, and stay warm. It also adds additional challenges such as no fast travel, reduced carry weight, and uh, leveling up only when you sleep. See the survival mode entry to, for, in the help for details. Um, but no, I don't want to enable survival mode. That's another way to play. There's the dragon leaving. So we came out of this cave, and now we are... There he goes. Looks like he's gone for good this time. No way to know if anyone else made it out alive. But this place is going to be swarming with Imperials soon enough. Let us clear out of here. My sister, Gerda, runs the mill in Riverwood. Her clothes. I'm sure she'd help you out. It was probably best if we split up. But I wouldn't have made it without your help. So you get your first quest. So if you go to, let me see your quests again. Quests. So we just did Unbound. So that's us escaping. So we looted his body. We escaped Helgen. We made made our way through the keep. So now before the storm is the next quest that we have. So Rayloff suggests that you head to the nearby town of Riverwood. His sister owns a lumber mill and should be able to help you. So you got to go talk to Girder in Riverwind. So. But I want to harvest all these different things. So there's always there's 
tons of stuff that you can harvest in this game that you can use for alchemy and alchemy is awesome because it helps you make potions that do all kinds of cool things not only do they help you out to do cool things but they also um, sell for money and money is king in this game the more money you can find the better so I'll start showing you some of the things like here these are mountain flowers blue mountain flowers red mountain flowers there's thistle back here um, what else do we have around here on dead logs you can usually find mushrooms that are called mora tapanella which are very handy do I see any of it around here oh there's some there so I'll go over there and I'll show you oh there's a butterfly you can grab butterflies they're worth I got two butterfly wings there purple mountain flowers and then now he just gave me another quest to go miscellaneous quest join the storm cloak rebellion is something that he said so you should he said you should go to Windhelm to join Jarl Ulrich to find out what's going on with the dragon coming so in this game you can side with the Imperials you can side with the storm cloaks or you can kind of not side with anybody if you want Okay, so now that I found those, I wanted to get that butterfly before it flew away. There, this is the Mora Tapanella there. This mushrooms. Mora Tapanella. More red and blue mountain flowers. Like I said, there's all kinds of stuff that you can harvest, and eventually they grow back. It just takes a bit of time. I can't remember how many days it takes, but they do grow back. And then there's also stuff you'll be able to find. I don't have a pick yet, but I'll see if I can find. Somewhere over here, I believe there's an ore vein. Yeah. So this is ore. So there's an iron ore that you can harvest. And then there's other kinds of ore as well. Ooh, that's a bandit camp there. Do I want to try and fight the bandits? I don't want to push my luck now. Hmm. Possibly. So this all. So what you're supposed to do is run down this road. This is the road that I you're supposed to come down supposed to run down this road just nice and calmly not going veering off all over the place like I was More thistle. certain ingredients aren't worth as much as others but they're all they all are useful and will make something I'll go back to that bandit camp in a minute. The great thing about Skyrim is if I go to the world, uh, so yes, world map. So this is Riverwood. This is where you're supposed to head towards. This is right one. This is that Helgen. That's the place you were at. But then this whole thing is the world. So there's different major cities Riften, Windhelm. Winterhold, Dawnstar, Morthal, Solitude, Markath, Falkreath, and Riverwood, and Winter Whiterun. Um, so this whole world is free to explore. You can do whatever you want. Um, however, certain areas are a little bit... Um, there's you can always run into random stuff that are sometimes more are more powerful than you and will kill you if you aren't careful so all right now these are a very important thing these are the guardian stones so there's a thief stone 
there's a mage stone and there's a warrior stone and what they do when you choose to activate them so it's under the sign of the warrior you will learn all combat skills 20 percent faster you may only have one blessing on at a time so warrior activates combat skills the mage stone activates magic skills and the thief stone activates thieves skills so in the skills um, enchanting and all of the uh, magic skills are considered um, mage stone stuff smithing and then heavy armor block two-handed one-handed is and I even think light armor is combat and then archery sneak lock picking pickpocket speech and alchemy are under the thief stone so I want to activate the warrior stone <clears throat> now one of the things that I was wanting to mention about this game that makes it a little bit tricky is as you level up in the game so do the challenges in this game so when you go to the map you'll unlock different places all around the world there's different mines there's different areas there's different all kinds of things everywhere throughout the game and as you level up in level like right now I'm level two and I'm almost level three as you level up things will get harder that you haven't already seen um, and it does get to a point where think around like level nine or level ten on legendary difficulty things are very hard to fight at that point um, if you're not like really a, either a really good at the game or b um, you have a lot of like really good alchemy stuff or really good enchantments or really good gear um, that it's hard to compete so sometimes leveling up sometimes you don't want to level you can get the experience and level up your skills but you don't want to actually increase your level so there's some bandits. See, as soon as I approach, they're going to want to try and fight me. Oh. So they've decided to fight me. So what I like to do is kind of back off and try and fight them. At least, like, try to be one at a time kind of thing. healing this guy's almost dead so I want to try and kill him there he's dead so now I don't have to worry about fighting him what you want to try and do is stagger people if you can. Yes, I know my magic is almost low. That's fine. So that other person's shooting arrows at me. So if you can Even if they block, they still take some damage, so... But you want to try and do, like, a power attack like that, which will... Where'd that archer go? There she is over there. All right. So, 
take gold. Treasure map is always good. A hunting bow is decent. Do I want a fishing rod? I've never tried a fishing rod. This is new. Uh, yeah, I'll grab a fishing rod, sure. From when I used to play. Alright. So there's more more Tapanella. Ooh, who's this guy? There's always random wandering Hello people. There, fellow traveler. One itinerant minstrel and wandering wastrel. Ah. Oh, so he's a minstrel. Truly, this is a good place to play a song. So he can sometimes you'll find people who can teach you. Well, after a little incident with a roguish lad and uh, the daughter of a prominent fame. Well, let's just say just <laughs> If you're serious about sharpening that tongue, you might try the Bard's College in solitude. Uh -huh. So then you can make an, you can give him 25 gold and he'll sing you a song, or you can ask him what he's doing out here, or you can just let him go. All right. So banded iron shield, that's better than my shield, so it's I'll pick it up. Oh, and a steel sword, that's better than my iron sword, so I'll take both of those. And then you can see if any of these are worthwhile carrying. And probably not. They're all really heavy, so I'm not going to bother with them. Where'd the other guy die? So now if we go to items. Oh yeah, I want to heal myself before I recover too much. I'm trying to up my restoration skill. A hide shield. Uh, it's not worth it. Steel sword I'll grab because it's worth it, and those aren't. And now I gotta go back to their camp. And do they have anything in here? So night falls on the sentinel. That is a. This is something you'll find too. This is a skill book. So this increases my one handed skill by one. So I grab that. Um, use chopping block. Is there an axe around here? I wish there was a wood cutting axe. So there's some fish that you can um, take for food. I'll take the coin purse. What's in the satchel? Lockpick. Okay. Food. I'll take that and I'll show you what food does. Um, and then there's a sack inside here that sometimes you can't get unless you crouch. Oh, more tomatoes. Awesome. Wooden plate, tankard. And then there's always this thing, black mage robes. So those increase. If you look at apparel, uh, novice robes, black mage robes. Uh, basically do the same thing as novice robes where it regenerates your magicka faster. But you can... Uh, I'll show when you. I'll show you what you can do with those after. So, I'm going to now, because my iron shield is only 22 armor, but my banded iron shield is 24, so it's worth it's better. So if I favorite this and I unfavorite this, now I can put that back on too. So now I have that instead. So my armor's higher. Um, okay, so then. Food is something that you can make, and they all give you something. So, like Alta Wine um, restores 15 points of stamina, but stamina regenerates 30% slower for the next 30 seconds whenever you drink alcohol. So it gives you a sh boost of stamina, but it reduces your regen rate. Um, same with Blackbriar Mead, reduces your stamina regeneration rate. Um, and then food, different types of food, like cabbage, restores one point of health. Seared slaughterfish, when you eat it, restores five points of health. Tomatoes, one point of health. And then wine, again, is the same as the Alta wine, where it gives you stuff. You can, what I've mentioned about tomatoes, is you can make something called vegetable stew. Once I get to a place where there's a, a cooking section... Um, and vegetable stew is great because it regenerates your stamina. And 
you find in gardens all over the place uh, the things you need to make it other than tomatoes. Like you need cabbages, potatoes, and leeks, and tomatoes to make vegetable stew. You can pick in all kinds of gardens everywhere, leeks and cabbage and potatoes, but you cannot find tomatoes anywhere unless in, you get lucky and find them in sacks and barrels. Um, okay, what was I going to show you? Oh yeah, the other thing I was going to show you is I picked up a treasure map. Oh, and a Toma Sparks. So tomes are spells, so you can use them to uh, learn how to cast a spell. So I've learned how to cast Sparks now, which is a new destructive spell. So it's Flames does uh, 8 points of damage per second um, and targets uh, on, it lights people on fire and they take extra damage if they're on fire. Um, Sparks does 8 points of shock damage to health and magicka per second. So it, Sparks is really good against other mages because it drains their magic. Um, and then healing heals you 10 points per second at the cost of uh, 10 magicka per second. But what I want to do, I'm going to quickly level up and get another thing into health. And my next level up that I want is actually Restoration. I want to get Novice Restoration, which uh, my basic healing spell costs half mana. So, and then this unlocks other things inside of this. So, Dual Restoration Casting is really good. Um, dual casting restoration spell overcharges the effects into a more powerful version, which I'll show you what that means in a second. Then there's recovery, which uh, your magicka regenerates faster, so that's good to get. Avoid death. Once per day you heal 250 points automatically if you fall below 10% health. Um, then there's apprentice. Apprentice level spells cost half magic. Um, Regeneration is really good. Healing spells cure half 50% more, so that's good. Respite is pretty good. Healing spells also restore stamina, which is good. Necromage, all spells are more effective against undead. Um, so your turn undead spells are better. Um, then there's Adept Restoration. All these just increase, make your higher level spells cost half magic until you even get to the master ones. And then ward absorb. Wards recharge your magic when hit with spells. And I'll or recharge your magicka when hit with spells. So I'll show you what that means later too if I ever get a ward. Um, so what dual casting is, is if you, if I hit three twice, that puts healing in both of my hands. And if I push both buttons, that's dual casting. So I'm casting it with both hands. So if I get the ability of restoration dual casting, it makes my spells when I do that more powerful than just if I was normally doing it with both hands. So there, I now pull up my sword and shield. Okay. So let's head off to actually, you know what, I'm going to get back to the path, and I think I'm going to call it here for the, for this video. I will, next video, head into, uh, what's it called, the river, <laughs> Riverwood. Eh, actually, you know what, I'll run to Riverwood first, that's what I'll do right now. I'll stop the, the recording once I get to Riverwood, so I'll run down this path. Got my warrior stone on, so I. And at night, there's random creatures that run around. Like if you just saw that, I think that was a rabbit that just ran over here. Yeah, you can try and catch it if you want. It looks like it got hurt, so something was chasing it. There's all kinds of creatures that you can find at night. Um, there's wolves, there's bears, there's foxes, and there's like elk and deer that you can shoot and try to hunt. More 
flowers. I always like to try and find as much stuff as I can along the way because they're very beneficial later. Harvesting plants. Oh, see, I heard a howl. So there's a wolf nearby. Oh, there they are. See? Those right there. That's a couple of wolves. So now they're going to come and try and fight me. Oh, there's three of them. is low. One. No, there's only one left, so I should be fine. I just need to... myself up. Ooh, a garnet and a wolf pelt. Another wolf pelt. <laughs> Bear pelts and wolf pelts turn into leather, which you can use for crafting, for smithing, to make leather armor, which is a light armor. All right. So that was that. Some more, more tapanella there. There was a butterfly up here too. One thing, there's um, at night, there's in the daytime and in the nighttime, there are two different types of uh, moths and bugs that you can find. So at nighttime, you can find lunar moths, which their wings, um, I'll see if I can see one somewhere. Um, their wings are worth one thing, and there's also glow bugs. Let's see if I can find some more lunar moths. And then in the daytime, you can find monarch butterflies and blue butterflies. I don't see any lunar moths. more mora tapanella here like i said in dead trees is usually where you find the mora tapanella more thistle more there. there's all kinds of it all over the place it's very Good to find. And this is Riverwood. So I'll put away my weapons so I don't seem threatening. Sometimes when you come up to guards and you are got your weapons drawn, they're like, hey, what are you doing? Why you, why do you got your weapons out? So this is the sleepy town of Riverwood. Riverwood. Normally most people would be asleep, but it's the first time I'm coming in here, so everybody's awake. This is the first town that you what get to. It, Stand drunk on the job again? Raylo, what are you doing here? Huh. I'll be right down. So this is Gerda, the Rayloff's sister that she's supposed to meet. And this is Fly Amanita, that's a different type of Hush, Grognard. This is no time for your games. Go and 
watch the South go. Come find us if you see any Imperial soldiers coming. Aw, Mama. I want to stay and talk with Uncle Rayla. Look at you. Almost a grown man. Won't be long before you'll be joining the fight yourself. That's right. Don't worry, Uncle Rayla. I won't let those soldiers sneak up on you. <laughs> now, Rayla, what's going on? You look pretty well done in. I can't remember when I last slept. Where to start? Well, the news you heard about Alfred was true. The Imperials ambushed us outside Darkwater Crossing. Like they knew exactly where we'd be. That was... Two days ago now. We stopped in Helgen this morning. And I thought it was all over. I was lined up to the headsman's block and ready to start chopping. They wouldn't dare give Ulfric a fair trial. Treason for fighting for your own people. All of Skyrim would have seen the truth then. But then, out of nowhere, a dragon attacked. You don't mean a real lie? I can hardly believe it myself. And I was there. As strange as it sounds, we'd be dead if not for that dragon. In the confusion, we managed to slip away. Really, the first to make it to Riverwood? Nobody else has come up the South Road today, as far as I know. Good. Maybe we can lay up for a while. I hate to put your family in danger, girl, but. Nonsense. You and your friend are welcome to stay here as long as you need. Let me worry about the Imperials. Any friend of Raylo's is a friend of mine. Here's the key to the house. Stay as long as you like. If there is anything else you need, just let me know. <clears throat> so she can give you any of this stuff that you want. So I'll take a couple of healing potions. This ring's worth money. <laughs> Technically I'm not stealing anything because she's giving me any of this stuff. So I'm going to take a lockpick and that's about it. That's all I want. Cool. There is something you could do for me. For all of us here. The Jarl needs to know if there's a dragon on the loose. Riverwood is defenseless. We need to get word to Jarl Valgrup in Wolfram to send whatever troops he can. If you do that for me, I'll be in your debt. So now you talk to her and now she sends you on another quest to go speak to the Jarl of Whiterun. Jarl's like king... So that's the end of that little bit of the story. And I think that is where I'm going to call it for the night. Oh, I've been looking for a woodcutter's axe. You can search barrels for all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> Salt piles are always useful. Apples aren't so much. The healing you get from food, from regular food in this, isn't very good, but... All right, so I will just call it there for now. Um, I'll show you guys more about the game uh, as we go into it, what you can do with different stuff. Um, if you are enjoying this content, please like and subscribe, and I will call it there and hopefully see you in the next video of Skyrim. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.